QuickBooks Desktop 2023. Print, save as PDF, and organize profit and loss or income statement reports. Let's do it with Intuit QuickBooks Desktop 2023. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Here we are in QuickBooks desktop sample rock castle construction practice file provided by QuickBooks going through the setup process, maximizing the homepage to the gray area, view drop down, noting that we have the hide icon bar and open windows list checked off, open windows open on the left hand side. We're not going to be opening up the profit and loss and balance sheet like we normally do, but rather go into the memorized reports which we have set up in a prior presentation. If you don't have those memorized reports, that's okay. You could still follow along, opening up a standard profit and loss, for example, and look through the options that we will have to organize the reports, print the reports as a PDF, save the reports. We are keeping in mind trying to organize this information in such a way that we can provide it to an end user, such as a client or supervisor. So we're gonna to go to the reports drop down, noting that we have the memorized reports that we set up in prior presentations here under our category. And we can also go into the report center, which is what we will do now. Going into the report center, maximizing it to the gray area because it always unmaximizes for some reason, which is annoying. And then we're going into the memorized reports tab. And there's the reports that we have memorized under the category of client uh, month end reports. I'm gonna review, see them as a list. Again, if you don't have these reports, that's okay. You can kind of follow along and then create your own reports as we go. We're focused on the income statement reports. In the prior section of the course, we've been taking a look at, I'm gonna minimize QuickBooks, the balance sheet reports. And we tried to think about how we can save those balance sheet reports so that we can provide them to a client, for example. So we might save them on a month by month basis, possibly providing them to a client month by month. And last time, we then saved each of the reports. This way, we also save them on one Excel file so we can provide the Excel file. We can give each individual report if we so choose to as an attachment, or we can put it in a cloud drive. And then we use the Excel file and a PDF printer to put all the reports on one file. Now we're gonna be adding to this list. We're gonna be putting more reports in this folder. We will add them then to our Excel file. And then we can zip this folder again and provide both balance sheet and income statement reports. And then in a following presentation, we'll think about how to export them to Excel as well. So let's go back on over. So we have then in QuickBooks set up these memorized reports under our category for month end reports, we've numbered them, put them in order in an attempt to make it as easy as possible at the end of the period to just open them up, change the date range that is necessary, organize them as we so choose to be able to provide them to clients as easily as possible. We're now down here on report number seven, which is an income statement summary. I'm gonna run the income statement summary. If you don't have this report, you can just open up an income statement uh, or profit and loss report and you can collapse all we did was collapse the rows and now we're going to be working on how we can provide this to someone we can print it if we so choose we can save it as a pdf we can save it as a pdf this way or with the pdf printer we can email it although you need to set up an account in quickbooks to do that and it's still a little bit limited because you might have to attach multiple files or give multiple emails when we're giving multiple reports at the end of the month it might be better to save them as a pdf put them in a cloud drive zip them so you have one attachment for example possibly or we can make export them to excel which we'll do in future presentations possibly using excel and a cute pdf printer to put them on one pdf file which we'll see later 
We here are just gonna be exporting them or saving them as a PDF. So here we go, we're gonna save it. Notice I'm just continuing to put them in my folder here. I'm gonna change the name down here. So I like to hover under the name so I can change it nice and easy. This is report number seven, I believe. And notice the numbering is kind of useful if you're gonna provide this to someone in a folder like a zip drive or a OneNote drive or even as an attachment because then you can give them a suggestion of the order in which you think they should be opening the reports, for example. So then we have an income statement summary. Gonna save it. Boom, there it goes. Now let's just open the next one. Let's close this one out. And I'm just gonna go back to my report center. Let's go to number eight. This is the standard income statement now with the expanded rows down below. This time when I save it, I'm gonna save it using the cute PDF printer. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to print the report and then I'm gonna print it to the cute PDF printer just to demonstrate that you might wanna know this option because sometimes in QuickBooks and in other programs, you do not have the capacity to have a print to a PDF kind of option or save as a PDF. And therefore you can always use a cute PDF printer to do that using the printing option, not to send it to an actual printer, but to a PDF printer. So it's just a good thing to know about. They have some charts, I believe, in QuickBooks where we run into that situation where they don't have the option of saving it as a PDF for some reason, and you can use the cute PDF printer. So this is the income. Is it going to the right place? No, it's totally not going to the right place. It's going somewhere weird. Let's copy the, I'm gonna copy the destination here. And I'm just gonna put that up top. That's where I want it to go. So there it is. And month in reports, there it is. So now I'm gonna say this is gonna be number seven, income statement standard, something like that. We'll save that one. Okay, I'm gonna close this back out. Now just note the variety of reports we have just on the income statement. You don't have to give the same um, kind of reports on a monthly basis. If you're a bookkeeper, I'm gonna open up number uh, nine now is the one we're on. But these are just some ideas of all the kind of variants that you can do with just the standard balance sheet and income statement. We'll talk about more reports in future presentations. I'm gonna send this one out. Let's just do the normal save as a PDF again. Now this is a comparative report, income statement by quarter. So we're, we got the four quarters and then the total. So you could, by the way, if you wanted to um, do a month by month for the whole year or a quarter by quarter for the whole year, you could try to say, I'm gonna give this one instead of giving a standard income statement possibly because it does have the totals on it already. So giving them the standard income statement is kind of redundant. So although it's easier to read a standard income statement than one that's broken out by quarter or by month because it's got a bunch more stuff in it. So these are options that you can you can do when you're thinking about should how should I organize this stuff when I give it to my client. I want to impress them but not overwhelm them. All right, so we're going to say this is going to be then number uh this should be number 9. I've got two number 7s for some reason. So I'm going to say this is going to be an income statement by QT quarter. And so let's save that one. This is the destination folder where they are going. Let's fix that uh, double number seven, the income statement standard. I'm gonna right click on it and edit that one. Re edit the name and make that number eight. Number eight. Okay, back on over. Closing this back out. So now we are on, we did number nine. We're on number 10, two more here. So this is gonna be the month by month comparison, uh, December, the current last month, and then November, and then the change and the percent change. Once again, you could do a comparison of quarter by quarter comparison as well. So many options. Let's go ahead and print this. I'm gonna save it as a PDF, I should say. And we're gonna put our cursor right under this and say this is number 10, I would think. Income statement, statement, uh, month comparative. So you might think a little bit more deeply on the, on the name, on which names would be best. Doing this a little bit quickly. I'm gonna close this back out. And one more, number 11, 
Number 11, and this is comparing the current month and the current year to the prior month, same month in the prior year, change of the of the dollars and the percents. We could do this similar thing with a quarter, with a quarter, for example, comparing to the prior quarter and so on. Let's go ahead and save it as a P to the D to the F. Save, and this is gonna be number 11, income statement 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 month month comparative prior year so we could probably do better with the name on that but it is what it is that's what we'll do so those are our our reports now if we were to organize this to give this to somebody we can go into all these reports i should probably move this excel outside here of our reports let's put the excel like out here I can give these to them one by one, but now of course, if I have the balance sheet and income statement reports, now we're talking 11 reports. That's a lot of attachments, probably gonna overwhelm someone, which could actually detract from us, you know, trying to impress them with with our the information we're giving them. We might then want to zip it, so we could zip the report and then attach it, which could make it a little bit nicer. Uh, we, could, we could also put it on a cloud drive, like a OneDrive, or a Dropbox or something so they can access it that way. That's nice, but still a little bit of an issue because you gotta go online and download it online. So it's kind of still a little problematic or in future presentations, we'll talk about how to use Excel as we did with the balance sheet. We'll just continue adding more to Excel and then use that to make one PDF with all the reports on it, which can be tedious in its own way as well because the formatting is a little bit different and it's going to be one long report but attachment wise it's kind of nice because then you can give someone just one report with all the stuff in it which can be a, impressive so let's go ahead and just zip this so if i zip this i can right click and say zip we want to zip this file compress this file compress to a zip file and so there it is so we had one before this is the latest one let's delete the last one and so now when i attach this to an email or if i attach it to an email I can then attach the zipped file where I cannot attach the folder. I would have to attach each individual file if I was trying to attach it to an email. In future presentations, again, we'll add to Excel. Let's see it this way this time. We'll export all these to Excel like we did with the balance sheet reports to the same Excel file we set up. And then we'll use that Excel file to create another PDF with all the reports, balance sheet and income statements created thus far.